Welcome to Storytime with the Walrus. In this week's story, we look at the thing that started my writing sprint. The story that sent me down one hell of a rabbit hole. This story is a fable of the pursuit of power and the things you have to give up to obtain it. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. Absolute power comes with a hefty price. Ismael had learned that the hard way. He sat on his throne of gold, surrounded by riches beyond mortal understanding. He had never been more depressed. He had begun life as an urchin. No parents, no money, no hope. His entire childhood had been devoted to the art of the rogue. His golden hair and a sea of brown had not helped him go unnoticed. He had thought of shaving it, but it was the only thing that made him not another face in the crowd. It made him Ismail. He was beaten when he got caught, so he learned not to be seen. Dodging and weaving past people and guards became as natural as breathing. Every time he got found, he cursed his slowness, his footwork, his weakness. He vowed not to be that weak again. At the age of 13, Ismael was caught for the last time in the city he never bothered to learn the name of. The guards had been on edge that day, but Hunger didn't wait for the twitchiness of others. The guards put up a good fight in their attempt to catch the boy, but Ismael was an expert in the act of escaping at this point. He was like an eel. It wasn't the guards that caught him, but the stranger with an eye patch. The man had pinned his mail down before he had clocked the stranger's presence. The guards upon seeing the mysterious man began panicking. That night had been long and painful, one of the worst beatings he had ever experienced. Only have myself to blame, Ismail thought. I'm still too weak. The guards had laughed at him. You screwed up, lad. The army is in town. We don't know what they're going to do with you, but you belong to them now. The man with the eye patch took him to his new life. Bolther had been impressed with Ismail. Impressed or not though, the lessons he beat into the young man were not gentle. You are good at dodging, but if all you can do is run, you'll never truly win. By the time he was 16, Ismael was a different man. Three meals, a bed and constant training would do that to most. His form had been chiselled. When he hadn't been carrying items for the army, the men had fun sparring with the child. At the start, Ismael had been a punching bag. But as the days became weeks, became months, became years, he gained skills and muscles to fight and be the best of his squad. With every victory, his lust for power grew. He officially joined the army on his 16th birthday, the chain of responsibility landing on him. Not that he could have ever escaped it. He was introduced to his new foes. He ignored the names, only focusing on how to beat them. Who cared who they were? These things were just another way for Ismael to get stronger. History would only remember the names of the winners, after all. By 23, Ismael was a legend in the army. He dove headfirst into hordes of enemies and remained there until there were none left standing. He relished in the challenge, lived for it. He would push his body to its absolute limits and then continue to demand more. They called him the Golden Sandstorm, a demon of battle. A demon he might have been, but behind the scenes, Ismael was frustrated. When he had first started fighting for his life, he had experienced a thrill that he could not express. That thrill sent him from one difficult situation to the next. But with every fight, the thrill would only wane. He always needed a new and better challenge, a problem that was starting to form. He didn't know how many more times he could increase that challenge. He was reaching his physical limits. The stronger he got, the more the army demanded of him. At the start he was just another face in the crowds, but as his accomplishments grew, the higher ups would select him for more difficult missions, demand more from him. As the years grew, he felt the chains of responsibility restrict his movements more and more. The war was coming to its end too. Ismael, who had never lived outside of survival, couldn't imagine life after the war. He was not built for peace. He had never cared who won or who lost. So long as he got stronger, felt the thrill once more. Everything changed when magic surfaced. Three mages, that was all it took for the enemy to decimate Ismael's army. Using powers few could dream of, they crushed their opposition. Magic had not existed before that time. No one could prepare for coordinated earthquakes and pillars of literal fire. Ismael watched the destruction and the powerlessness of the people who fought it. He needed that power. When Ismael reached 25, the empire he had once fought for had been wiped from the earth. He had abandoned the army when talks of surrendering reached him. He would not be part of such weakness. He shattered the chains of responsibility that weighed him down as he left in the pursuit of power. He had become a lone wanderer now, searching for the secret of magic. 
His lust for power overwhelmed every sense he had, becoming a far greater chain weighing him down than any before. He explored the world, following every rumour of magic he found. He met many people, some friends, some dead from the moment they spoke. He fought beasts that should not exist and no longer did. Met beings that provided the thrill long lost to him, and learnt the methods of fighting that each culture provided. But in all his searching he found no hint of magic. The three people who had it remained the only people to learn it. At 35 he almost gave up. The constant fighting had brought his strength far above a normal man, but the strain he caused himself had worn him down. He was most likely one of the greatest warriors in the world, his tale would span lifetimes, but the pursuit of a power he did not possess chained him to his path. At both his physical and mental limit, he heard of a place that could allow him to do, have, and be anything he dreamt of. This would be the last adventure he would take either way. He had no ability to continue past this one last journey. The place, for as hidden as it was claimed, was easy to find, almost as if he had been guided there. Inside was a land of gold, riches and feats of power. It was the world of someone who had everything. This was as likely a chance to learn as it came. What is it you desire? State your wish and I will fulfil it, a voice said from the back of the cave. There sat a man in the prime of his life. He sat on a golden throne, almost blinding to look at. The man radiated strength, to the point that when Ismael looked at him, he instantly knew he would not survive the encounter if he attacked. Fear crawled over Ismael immediately. He hadn't felt this way in so long. He hated it. He missed it. I want magic. I want power. I want to be the strongest being in the world. Ismael practically shouted at the stranger. It took but a moment for the man to react, but when he did, a smile washed over the face in front of him. It unnerved Ismael. Magic? That is simple. I provided it to three youngsters so long ago. Power? No man would stand a chance against you. But to be the strongest being in the world? Well, there can only be one of those, and that is me. I can give you all you desire, but the price is high. Are you willing to pay it? He saw the man move his arm. The shock in the man's eye confused Ismael. I will pay any price for power. Ismael answered, not missing a beat. The being nodded, standing up. He moved as if it was his first time in a very, very long time. Then kill me and take my power. Ismael did not need a further explanation. Years of constant fighting trained him to never question, only act. He rammed his sword through the man in front of him. Surprise washed over the warrior as the now dying man did not so much as flinch towards the blade, merely accepting it. Congratulations, you fool, were the stranger's dying words. Light surrounded Ismael as knowledge and powers flowed into every pore of his body and instantly he knew the mistake he had made long before the consequences grabbed him. The man who he killed was not a human at all, but a genie. By granting the wish, he had transferred his powers to Ismael, along with the curse. The throne the stranger had sat on was actually a genie's vessel that bound the once alive creature and now Ismael. The new genie had been given unlimited power, but with it came the cost of no freedom to use it. As he was pulled to his throne and his prison, Ismael did everything he could to break the spell. The price for absolute power was absolute oppression. Only giving up the power and his life could free him from the curse. A hundred years passed. Ismael was an entity that was stuck granting the wishes of others. With each wish came a brief window of freedom. Ismael treasured them as few as they were. He was trapped, depressed and ready for the end. In his prison, he had plenty of time to think of his past. Whenever he had gained power, he had been weighed down by something. Survival, responsibility, expectations were but a few of the chains that had bound him. When he had gained enough power to be free of the chains of others, he found his need for more power created a far heavier chain than any that came before. That lust had overwhelmed him, controlled him. It was as if power and oppression came hand in hand. Now at the peak of power, he had lost all his freedoms. Time after time, he worked for the benefit of others now, without the ability to do anything he wished. By the time he heard the sentence that freed him from his prison, he welcomed the ending. I want to be the strongest being in the world, Ismael smiled, powerless to stop his death. He was free at last. And that's my tale. What did you think? It was my first time writing such a small piece and it holds a special place in my heart now. But I will admit, it's not my best work. 
Anyway, NaNoWriMo. The event is in full swing at this point, I assume. Full disclosure, I am reading this before I start writing, so there isn't much I can do to update you on how things are going. Let's tell you about the story instead. I am going to write an anthology describing the beginning and end of a fantasy world, told through tales throughout its lifespan, showing how the world changed as the end drew near. I have based the setting on ancient Greece because I love the zaniness of those gods. Each of my pantheon of gods are the godly aspects of each of the deadly sins. They are fun to think about, but making sure they remain distinct from one another will be difficult. Relish the challenge. I estimate it will take an intro, 10 tales, and an ending to complete this story. So that is what I'm working on. It does mean I can pick and choose which tale to write as my mood takes me. I'll leave the details vague, but I have basic story beats in my head to make this all work. But I think that'll do for today. The next time you see one of these videos, I'll be so deep into NaNoWriMo, I'll either be swimming or drowning. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more Walrus stories and or gameplay should you so choose. Catch you later and wish me luck!